welcome back to Main Street Informant. In this channel, we provide information related to wealth, money, power, finance, business, and economics. In today's video, we will learn how a powerful family destroyed a country. This is Sri Lanka, a sovereign island nation off the coast of southern India with a population of 22 million. There was a time when Sri Lanka was the most developed country in South Asia, but they are currently experiencing a terrible economic crisis. The national debt is $51 billion, blackouts that roll over frequently. They are experiencing severe supply shortages of fuel, food, medicine, and even printing paper. Airlines are being requested by the government to stop refueling in the country to save on fuel. And the worst part is, the value of money is collapsing. Sri Lanka's economy is in crisis. People's life savings are disappearing into thin air. Many Sri Lankans are tired of their dreadful situation. Government officials' homes have been set on fire. And for his own protection, the current prime minister was forced to retreat to a military installation. Protesters broke inside the presidential mansion. What a disaster! How could this happen? We should start by taking a look at the Rajapaksa family. For a while, the Rajapaksas were a significant family in the nation. They built wealth from farming rice and coconuts. They got involved in politics and became very influential due to their important status. Mahinda Rajapaksa, the second of nine children, was elected president in 2005. And for 10 years, his family ran the nation. As the family's power increased, more brothers, sons, nephews, cousins, daughters-in-law, and other relatives quickly entered the government and rose to the top official positions. It was now a family matter in Sri Lanka. Basil and their older brother, Chamal, were assigned to the Irrigation and Economic Development Departments, while Mahinda appointed his brother Gotabaya as Defense Secretary. Years of expansion in Sri Lanka were supported by a significant amount of foreign debt, but things were going well for the majority of their rule. Despite some detractors, the majority of Sri Lankans supported their ruling family, not just for improving the nation and social status, but also for restoring peace. There was a terrible civil war in the nation from 1983 to 2009. The Tamil Tigers, a rebel organization, would battle the government while claiming discrimination. The Sri Lankan armed forces decisively defeated the Tamil Tigers in May 2009, ending the civil war after a 26-year military struggle. The president and the defense ministry were brothers. The two were lauded as heroes once the rebel were crushed. Voters who approved of Mahinda's violent but successful victory over Tamil rebels in a 26-year civil conflict showered him with praise. But the boy's image wasn't exactly spotless. Mahinda was the subject of numerous accusations of corruption, including questionable business dealings with Chinese governmental equivalents. Even so, his brother Gotabaya was also somewhat involved. He was under investigation for acquiring MIG fighter aircrafts from Ukraine. But despite these issues, the family continued to make large purchases. He made grand infrastructure promises, including the construction of an airport in China that is currently completely empty. He attempted to stimulate the economy by taking on substantial debt and luring foreign investment by supporting the Sri Lankan rupee. The plan succeeded in the short run. Between 2006 and 2014, the gross domestic product or GDP per capita was more than doubled as a result of the economy's expansion. Sri Lanka surpassed the Philippines, Indonesia, and Ukraine. 
it created a sizable middle class and helped 1.6 million individuals escape poverty. Sri Lanka rose to become one of the World Bank's upper middle income nations by 2019. However, all of that expansion came at a price. From 2006 to 2012, Sri Lanka's external debt tripled, bringing the country's total public debt to 119% of its GDP. The expansion policy was suspended in 2015, yet the debt continues to grow. The family government made more mistakes with each passing year. Every misstep increased the risk. In order to win the election, the military brother Gotabaya made promises of tax reduction. The government lost 25% of its revenue during this time. To make matters worse, COVID severely damaged Sri Lanka's tourism industry in 2020. A significant source of revenue for repaying foreign debt was from tourists. Then, in an unfortunate turn of events, in 2021, war breaks out between Russia and Ukraine. Prior to the war, Russians and Ukrainians frequently made up the majority of visitors to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's tourism industry suffers even more as a result of the cancelled flights to Moscow and Ukraine. The Rajapaksa administration committed another tragic mistake in April 2021. All fertilizer imports were outright prohibited to avoid depleting foreign exchange reserves. This was a very bold approach because no nation could conceivably run its food supply entirely on organic fertilizer. Farmers had to stop producing overnight, which caused the food supply to run out. As a result of having to import rice and other essential items, food prices skyrocketed. Two important exports, tea and rubber, also came to a standstill. The strategy was changed by the administration in November 2021, but the harm had already been done. After that, the situation only got worse. The nation bought more goods than it exported and spent more than it earned. As a result, its foreign reserves started to deplete. This isn't very exceptional in and of itself because many nations take on additional debt in order to maintain their economies. The foreign debt for Sri Lanka, however, is so huge that they are unable to even pay the interest, which would otherwise keep the debt from growing. Because Sri Lanka is a small island that depends on maritime supplies, the situation was made considerably worse by the international explosion on oil prices, which made importing even more expensive than usual. Food shortages resulted from the inability to import and foreign exchange reserves are still under pressure. The official inflation rate increased to 17.5% percent in February 2022, it was 55 percent by June. For instance, the cost of cooking gas has increased by approximately three times since a few months ago. Even printing paper is difficult to get, causing schools to close and tests to be cancelled. The Sri Lankan rupee experienced the largest dayfall in more than 40 years in March 2022. These data show how quickly the issue is becoming worse. Sri Lanka had 7.6 billion in foreign exchange reserves at the end of 2019. By March 2020, it had decreased to 1.93 billion, and by July 2022, only 50 million remained. To import necessities like fuel, there is no longer enough foreign money available. On June 29, 2022, the nation stopped selling petrol. It will only be used in true emergencies and only had enough fuel for one more day. Since the fuel crisis of the 1970s, it was the first nation to ban petrol sales. It wasn't long until the situation became dire. People started going hungry and everything was in limited supply. The most urgent needs being food and gasoline. Long fuel lines are frequently seen with fights breaking out over disagreements. Because of its current financial crisis, 
the government will have to start printing money to pay its employees' salaries. And most of us are aware of how that ends up. In a sense, the Sri Lankan economy has reached its breaking point. Sri Lanka no longer has the resources to purchase items from outside and is unable to operate to generate sufficient income. The government missed a payment on its $51 billion external debt in April. At the end of the year, another $7 billion will be due. Early in month of April 2021, protests broke out across Sri Lanka. The authorities initially attempted to crush the demonstrators, which led to fatal car accidents around the nation. However, they were unable to stem the flow of rage. The Rajapaksa brothers, who were formerly honored as leaders for ending the civil war, are now despised. A family that dominated Sri Lanka politics for more than 10 years has seen a catastrophic fall from grace. Mahinda Rajapaksa, the former president, had to leave his official residence after protesters tried to storm the building. In other parts of Sri Lanka, the Rajapaksa family homes have also been targeted. Currently, there is a lot of risk and uncertainty in Sri Lanka. To further emphasize this, new information emerged. President Gotabaya's official mansion was broken in two by tens of thousands of demonstrators on June 10. He was last seen speeding out of the city on the highway. His secretary and other employees were unaware of his whereabouts, but he was eventually detained at the airport as he attempted to leave for Dubai. After he left, demonstrators carrying flags from Sri Lanka burst into the president's mansion while wearing helmets, while some are seen cooking in the kitchen, others are swimming in the pool. One of the rooms even featured a piano sing-along to boost morale. The government's ability to control the situation changed when many Sri Lankan military soldiers joined the demonstrators for the first time. What occurs when governments lose control of an economy is also demonstrated by the protests and residents' storming of the government buildings. All other world nations ought to be observing this closely. Overall, the situation is terrible and is the result of a complex interaction between governmental negligence and outside economic and geopolitical causes. Furthermore, due to the lack of stable government, it will be very challenging to negotiate loans or restructure the country's debt. How can this be resolved? Actually, borrowing money is the only choice. Sri Lanka is looking for $3 billion in urgent financing to pay for imports of necessities like fuel. The World Bank has agreed to lend $600 million, and the government has also asked the International Monetary Fund for $4 billion. The government would have to increase taxes and interest rates in order to receive the loan. According to the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, which would exacerbate the nation's cost of living crisis. They are also looking for assistance from nations like China, India, Qatar, Australia, Japan, and the US. A $1 billion credit line has been agreed upon by Sri Lanka and India for the importation of necessities like food and medication. China and Sri Lanka are in discussions over how to restructure their $6.5 billion debt. China agreed to increase Sri Lanka's reserves by exchanging the rupee for the renminbi. The renminbi is the official currency of the People's Republic of China. However, China has now expressed its discontent with Sri Lanka and asked the IMF for assistance. The Rajapaksa family is now worried not only about their political future, but also about their safety and security if a new government assumes power. We can only hope that the situation improves and that they are able to obtain the resources required to restore its economy. Nobody from any country deserves what has occurred to the Sri Lankan people. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more interesting stories like the Rajapaksas and the Sri Lankan government. You can check out more videos on the channel and share.
it will help my videos reach more people. See you in the next one.